Hello there and welcome to our fourth uh, session of The Happy Writer. Thanks as always to the team at Holding It Together Apart for inviting me to post these videos. Um, it's a, here in Dublin, it's a lovely crisp day today. Uh, the leaves are really falling, falling very quickly from the trees. I think in another week or two, uh, we'll be very much in the, in the heart of winter. Uh, and I hope, I hope that you're all keeping safe and well. I know that it continues to be a, kind of a time of great uncertainty. And even though we shouldn't be mentioning the, the, C, the C word, uh, I know a lot of people are kind of both looking forward to it and also wondering what is going to happen in relation to the restrictions. So just acknowledging where we are this morning and, and reminding ourselves that one of the ways that we can continue to self-care and mind ourselves is to look after our creative life. And so um, thanks a million for joining uh, us on the, on the video. And today we are going to uh, just be looking at kind of motivation and, and that whole area around resilience as well. So I'll just, as always, I'll just begin sharing. So I'm hoping that either you're, you're going to start writing or if you have been writing that to keep writing and that's, that's, the, ma that's the magic part of it to be able to keep writing. So this week, week four is kind of when the going gets tough. And like every endeavor, it, there are times where it comes easily to us and other times where we may be, may be struggling. So today we're going to be focusing on what, um, perhaps kind of what, what kind of mindset can we get ourselves into so that we are able to, to understand that that struggle is often part of the whole um, kind of process and uh, very much a natural part but that we can, we can learn to cope with. So building resilience, and I, I often use Snoopy as an example of somebody who, who seems to have no difficulty with, with resilience or, or mo kind of motivation. He's a, he's a great character. So you can see here what he's saying. He says, gentlemen, regarding the recent rejection slip you sent me, I think there must have been a misunderstanding. What I really wanted was for you to, to publish my story and send me $50,000. Didn't you realize that? So just the sheer, um, yeah, the sheer kind of self belief and 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 uh, surprise when when he when he doesn't get what he what he thinks he deserves. He's a great character. So just a quote here from uh, Brené Brown, Dr. Brené Brown, where she said she, through all of her research, um, and and she has done a substantial amount of research, that realization that there is no innovation or creativity without failure. Period. There is no way that we can hope to to be creative writers and hope to be writers who are whose work perhaps is taken seriously and or even for ourselves the pleasure of writing for ourselves we won't be able to improve and get better as writers if we can't accept that there will be times when there'll be failure involved or rejection involved and that is just part of the that's part of the creative process and i think it can be it can be reassuring to realize that <clears throat> And I think often when we're we're reading books by famous authors, or you know, we're we're, we're seeing the finished product with so much work that has gone into it, um, and and years and years of of um, <coughs> of of building the craft. But sometimes when we have that book in our hand, it can feel like oh, they just kind of sat down at the desk and they wrote, and then miraculously it it happened. But we know that that is far from the truth for all of us. So just to recap on when we're designing a new habit, because this is just important in relation to what we're going to be chatting to uh, today, is we always we have that first cue, and then we have the, the, the acknowledgement that we need to be doing something between 40 and 50 times before we can say that it's building up into a routine. And the last part of that then is our, the reward. And this is, this is kind of what we, we, is, is important in terms of today, is that the if we don't build into our practice and our writing a, some sort of a reward that will give us the impetus to, get, to go back in the next time that we need to, then it's likely that our, we, we won't be able to, be, to create this new writing practice habit that we really want to do. So we're, we're just going to look at, um, we're, we're going to look at that in relation to resilience and, and how that might, how, how the two of them together can, can really work hand in hand. So building into your practice measurements of success that do not depend on anyone's say-so but your own. 
And that's, this is a really good way of building resilience, of realizing that you can decide what is a, a good day's writing for you. You can decide what, what success means to you, and define your own measurement of success. So you can, you can say, I know I, I'm, I'm successful at writing when, when I feel really happy that, I'm, that, that the writing is, is, is going well. You don't need, we don't need anybody else for, for that kind of measurement. We might have a measurement that says, you know what, I'm going to feel that I'm writing successfully if I turn up three times a week and I write for half an hour. That might be your measurement of success. So whatever, whatever measurement of success um, that you can decide on, um, and then when you, when, when you reach that and, 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 you, and you measure your own success, then the great thing is that we can, we can make sure that we, we reward that because that can really help us to keep going. So it might be, you know, if, if I do those three half hours of writing during the week, then I'm going to treat myself to, you know, over the weekend, I might, I might treat myself to going to the cinema or, well, not at the moment. I shouldn't have mentioned that. Don't mention the cinema. Um, you know, it might be, I might have, I, I might have a, a glass of wine when I'm watching my film or what, what, what at home, whatever it is, just rewarding that success. I might buy myself a new book, whatever. Um, and th when I was many years ago, when I was uh, training to be a coach, this is one of the books that we that, that we was on the course and it's called The Four Agreements. And one of the four agreements was this one. And it really, really resonated with me. Always do your best under any circumstances. Always do your best. No more, no less. But keep in mind that your best is never going to be the same from one moment to the next. And just kind of allow that one to sink in. So that our best on a week where things are going really well and maybe it's the, you know, the middle of the summer and, you know, we have a week off work and, you know, the kids are behaving themselves or, we, you know, we, our best that week could be amazing and our writing that week will be amazing. Our writing practice, we, we, you know, we get up early like we said we did and we would and, you know, we, we, we wrote the best that we could, like just an incredible feeling uh, attached to it. Um, but it could also be that, you know, in, in, the, in the midst of winter or deep November when we're, you know, we're struggling with the lockdown and, and, and the uncertainty, then the, our best may, may be different, but we, we can still try and do our best. So maybe, you know, our best at the moment might be even just to turn up for a half an hour or even to turn up for 15 minutes and knowing that, you know, given everything that's going on for me at the moment, that's, that's my best and know that that's good enough. So that are we always trying to do our best as writers, but recognizing that 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 can change from kind of one moment to the next. Um, and accepting uh, accept setbacks is a normal occurrence. So that in every writing project, there's all you know. It's rare that we start writing from beginning to end and then that's perfect and it's done and dusted. We you know when we go back to edit our, we might end up sending out our work, our work um, being submitted and, um, you know, hearing that actually we like your poem or we like your story, but we need you to change it X, Y, and Z. And there are always ways in which uh, in every writing project there are setbacks and just accepting very much so that, oh, that's just normal. Uh, that's just part of the process. And it's nothing, it, it, it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong. It simply means that this is it just, it, that's just a stage, kind of a setback stage in any project. And knowing that rejection is an integral part of the process. So if we do want to share our work with others, the reality is, is that some people will really love our work. Some people will like our work. Some people won't be bothered either way. And some people won't like our work at all. And that's, that's the reality. And for, for those of us who have, you know, have, have submitted and, and, and had work rejected and published, we know that you could you could send a piece to four or five different um, journals, and that same piece is rejected by four and, and, and accepted by a fifth, and it's the same piece of writing, but that's just um, recognizing that a particular publisher may get our work or they may not. So just accepting that, even though it's not easy, um, sometimes we need to have a little wallow in, in when the rejection comes back, but that's okay. But it is part of the process. Uh, and we're just going to spend a little bit of time uh, now on 
the inner critic, our inner critic. And before I began to kind of study this and do and, and do some research um, a year or two back when I was uh, organizing some workshops, I, you know, I really did think that you had to fight your inner critic and try and silence them and do everything you could to kind of push them out of the room in order to, to, to start writing. And I then came across the work of a, um, a Richard a Swartz, Dr. Richard Swartz, um, and he devised what's called internal family systems therapy. And I won't, you know, it's, it's, I won't be going into it here. But what he, what he says is that our inner critic is part of a, of a, one of a kind of, of, of a system of parts in us that's job is to try and protect us. Okay. And so our inner critic is trying to protect us from really difficult and uncomfortable feelings that we would have, we would have experienced first as children. Um, and the inner critic then their job is to, to, to stop us going out there and getting shamed, feeling abandoned, feeling ridiculed, um, feeling failure. So, so when, when, when our inner critic turns up and our inner critic may, everybody's inner critic maybe has a slightly different language that they use, but our, some, some of our inner critics are, are saying things like, oh, don't, you know, don't bother with that. Look, do they, do you know, no one needs to, to hear your work. You know, you don't bother. And, and it might be that kind of cajoling voice kind of saying, oh, don't bother. Just, just go and watch TV. Sure. You know, or for some people, <clears throat> the voice could be very, very critical. It could be like, who do you think you are? You know, that's rubbish. That's, that's terrible. Um, and that voice is really stopping us from writing. But rather than us trying to fight that voice, it's just listen, try and listen to them and learn what they protect. So if they're saying you're rubbish, then you ask yourself, what are they trying to protect me from? And it may well be they're, they're trying to protect me from feeling that experience that my work isn't any good and that if if i don't get my work out there well i won't have to feel that in a public way and our job as 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 adults adult writers uh, is to is to say to the voice um as we often talk to ourselves just it's okay don't worry i'm doing my best to to work on my craft and we'll make sure that the, it's the best it is before we send it out and when you're working with resilience, if that critic is saying, oh, your work is rubbish or I don't bother, you're saying, don't worry, if, you know, if, if the work is rejected, I can reframe it and, and understand that it's only one particular publisher that's rejected it. Um, and we're going to keep working on our craft and find a publisher um, that's the right fit for our work. And in that way, we can calm down the voice, that inner critic voice, and uh, that may be holding us back. But again, recognizing that that, that, that voice is probably part of everybody. Uh, um, no matter how confident they may appear, at times there's that, that voice, that niggling voice, that, 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 that's kind of keeping us or holding us back. So that's our inner critic. But what about the outer critic? What about those, what about those voices um, that, that, that would publicly and I think particularly in this often now in the social media space or uh, often people do get um, kind of reviews that can be quite harsh and quite critical. And um, Brené Brown, who I quoted earlier, she, she described when she first, um, she had her first very public um, kind of outing where she, she gave a talk on YouTube, thought it was only going to be for maybe a few hundred people. And it actually went, it went, it went viral and millions uh, listened to it and watched it. And the criticisms that, I mean, a lot of people thought it was fantastic, but some of the criticisms that came in the, in, 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 in the, um, in, in the comments were so vicious and so hurtful. She nearly curled up in a ball and, and decided she wouldn't, she wouldn't kind of go any further with it. But long story short, she came across this quote when she was feeling like she'd never get back out there again. And this quote made her realize that she doesn't need to listen to feedback from anybody unless they themselves are putting themselves out there and allowing themselves to be, to be vulnerable and, and, and being themselves and, 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 and put their work out there. So I'm just going to read it because it really is a powerful quote. It's, it's from Theodore Roosevelt. It's called The Man in the Arena. 
It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again because there is no effort without, without error and shortcoming. But who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails or if she fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. And that quote has inspired her to go on and, and, and continue to write and continue to, uh, to present in, in, in a, and be hugely influential recognizing that, that <clears throat> if, we, if, we, if we listen to those voices that are just shouting and being critical for the sake of it, they have no, they have no place in our creative practice. Uh, they have no place in our writing. We, we ignore them. <clears throat> we only take feedback from those that are actually out there themselves with their sleeves rolled up, getting um, with, with sweat on their faces. So just asking yourself the question, how will you build up your resilience as a writer, perhaps over the coming weeks? And what might, how might that show for you if you are at the moment struggling to either start writing or keep writing? How might you build up your resilience? So we'll just have a few kind of examples here. One way is to constantly remind ourselves, and I have to, you know, I think we all have to do this, you know, whatever stage we're at. Um, Remind yourself it's all about getting better. And that's the same for every writer from the novice to the Pulitzer Prize winner. It's all about getting better. It, you know, the, the, when they talk about this idea of the fixed and, and the growth mindset. A growth mindset is no matter what stage I'm at, I will, uh, you know, working on my craft, I will always get better. And then when I get better, I move on to another stage, but I still need to work in order to get, in order to get better. And if you think of some of the writers like Edna O'Brien or, you know, she just pops into my mind, somebody who is right, has been writing for decades and decades and decades. And each time she puts out a book, you can see she's stretching herself. She's pushing herself to write better. Margaret Atwood is another, is another fantastic writer who, who, who's, who's jumped into my mind. Um, lots, lots more out there. I'm sure there's some popping into your head as well. Seek out constructive and informed feedback on your work before you look to get it published. So if you're at the stage where you're just writing for pleasure and then just enjoying the process, that's fantastic. This one uh, doesn't need to apply. But if you are in any way looking to share your work with others, it is really useful to get some constructive and informed feedback on your work. Now, to be very clear about this is you, you look, you'd be asking maybe even a friend that you, that you trust. Um, but it is about in the early stages, making sure that you're not, that you're, like, as I said in an earlier uh, video, in the very early stages, just write for your own pleasure and don't worry about, about anybody else seeing it. Uh, as you're developing a little bit more, then there, is, there does come a time to begin to share the work um, and get that kind of feedback. And it might be through workshops. And I know, I mean, this is run by um, Dublin City Council. I know there are lots of workshops that are run through libraries, free workshop, writing workshops. So there's lots of places that you can actually get the kind of constructive and, and informed feedback before you, you put your work out to be published. And then if you are looking to be published, just doing your homework, take time choosing the places you submit your work to and make sure they're a good fit, a good fit for you and that you're a good fit for them. And because increasing your chances of an acceptance would help with the rejection. So, you know, if you send out your work to 20 places and you haven't looked, read the, the magazines, or you, you've no idea of the kind of style that they're looking for and you get 20 rejections back, that can be really hard. But if you spend time actually looking and reading the magazines and seeing, do, can I see my writing in, in there? You're much more likely to get at least one or two hits. Um, you probably you get, may get a few rejections too, because that's the way of it. So just reminding ourselves that the, we only fail if we stop writing. Once we, we can stop and start, but once we get back into it again, then, the, and, and that word failing too is, you know, fa fail is just 
we fail, we get up, we fail, we get up. It's just part, very much part of the process. On this week's poem, I've chosen, and I was thinking of it more in terms of kind of that, that, that if we don't build resilience and we don't write, or there can be that feeling of, very much that feeling of regret afterwards. You know, with all the people I've worked with and, and, and people that, that have, have, I've, I've shared my work with as well, um, I, I've never heard anybody say, I really regret that I'm writing. I only ever hear people say, I, I, I regret that I'm not writing. So this, this poem it kind of just is very much, that's kind of the mood of the poem. It's kind of, kind of nostalgic and, and, the, and, and there's regret in there, but apparently, I, I'm not, I, I have to confirm this, but I, I, apparently um, the, the poet had kind of wrote this after a period of, a kind of a, a long period of, of, of not being able to write. And it's called Sometimes It Happens. And sometimes it happens that you are friends and then you are not friends. And friendship has passed. And whole days are lost and among them a fountain empties itself. And sometimes it happens that you are loved and then you are not loved and love is past. And whole days are lost and among them a fountain empties itself into the grass. And sometimes you want to speak to her and then you do not want to speak. Then the opportunity has passed. Your dreams flare up. They suddenly vanish. And also it happens that if there is nowhere to go and then there is somewhere to go, then you have bypassed and the years flare up and are gone quicker than a minute. So you have nothing. You wonder if these things matter and then as soon as you begin to wonder if these things matter, they cease to matter and caring is past and a, mountain, and a fountain empties itself into the grass. And I think that that kind of metaphor for the, you know, for our creativity is, is that if we have all of these ideas that we'd like to write about and we don't, that if our ideas are almost like the fountain that's just emptying the water onto the grass and it goes into the grass and it soaks in and we don't see it anymore. Where if we have those ideas and we write the water from the fountain goes into the fountain and then it, it's recycled and back, back again. So there's this constant, you know, thinking, writing and from the writing, more, more thoughts, more, more, um, more ideas come. Um, so just just remembering that the most that the best way to build our resilience is, is to keep writing. And if you're feeling stuck or feel that you can't bounce back, don't worry about the quality. There was a great workshop I was at there recently, and we're talking about aiming low, aim low, um, but keep writing or engaging in writing related activities. And that might be research, that might be reading, um, anything that will will help us to to, to come back to the page. Taking some action will shift your perspective and get you moving again. And even even if when you know, particularly if we're not worried about the quality, if we're just kind of aiming low, just to keep get, getting the momentum going. You know, the laws of physics apply here too. Is you know, if we are not writing, it can be hard for, for for us to get moving again. But as soon as we do get moving, it's amazing. Even through the writing itself, new ideas can flow rather than us waiting for the ideas to begin writing. Um, so that's that's pretty much it for for this for this week's folks. And I just loved this image because it really for me the, that idea of the fountain just and and this you know this, the, and, and and just the yeah I just I just I just loved it and the fact that it's kind of it's replenishing itself and then coming back up again and the simple joy of standing in that in that in that water and and, and feeling it. So thanks a million. Um, really looking forward uh, to our fifth session and we'll be doing a little bit more around motivation as well um, and some more um, kind of writing uh, writing tips around, uh, around our writing schedule. So in the meantime, stay safe and well um, and I very much look forward to seeing you the next day. <laughs>